What's up everybody? Today we have a circuit analysis question with two batteries in it. We're going to use Kirchhoff's laws to go ahead and set up and solve this problem. When we only have one battery it's usually easier just to find the equivalent resistance and proceed that way. But with multiple batteries you're kind of forced to use Kirchhoff's laws to solve. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to move this circuit, make it bigger. So kind of the first thing you should do is establish the direction of currents. Now this one, they've already done that for us, so we don't really have to worry about that. But if they didn't, you would want to say, you just want to predict the currents, the direction. So for example, they're saying I2 is going this way, I1 is coming this way, I3 is going this way. And that's perfectly fine to do that. You can actually see right away, we can use kind of Kirchhoff's node law to solve at this junction here, okay? The junction law or the node law. So if you notice, I1 plus I2 is going to equal I3. All right, so we have incoming current into the node and outgoing current, they should be equal to each other. The next thing you're going to want to do is just kind of establish a loop in your circuit so we can use Kirchhoff's loop law. So it doesn't really matter what you choose to do. I'm just going to choose two clockwise loops. Notice you do have options. There's one big giant loop all the way on the outside that you could also choose. Okay, but we don't need to choose that one. You just have to make sure that you have enough to cover every single element in the circuit. And with these two on the inside, we have plenty. All right, so we're gonna use the, the loop law to solve this. So if you remember, that's basically saying that the voltage around a circuit should equal zero. So for example, choose a starting point. I'm gonna choose E here as my starting point. I'm gonna head in the direction of my loop. So as I move in this direction, I'm going to be going from a positive end to the battery to a negative end of the battery. So that means I'm decreasing voltage here. So I'm going to go negative 14 volts as I decrease voltage across. All right, then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to F. Nothing's there. I'm going to C. Nothing's there. I'm going to follow my loop through this 6 ohm resistor. So there's going to be a voltage across the 6 ohm resistor. And notice here, since we're going against the current, we're going from a low potential to a high potential. So in other words, we're increasing potential. So I'm gonna go plus, I'll just call this the voltage across the six ohm resistor. And again, since I'm going kinda from a low potential to a high potential, that's why I get a positive here. I like to use the analogy of like a river if you imagine our current that we drew here coming, moving this direction, so it's like on this side of our resistor, we're downstream. On this side of the resistor, we're upstream. And so we're going from down to upstream, meaning we're going from a low potential to a high potential. All right, now we're going across the 10 volt. Now we're going from a high to a low, right? Positive to negative. So we're decreasing in potential. So we're gonna be subtracting minus 10. And then let's go ahead and look here. So where is our current here? Oh, that's interesting. So it's not clear where direction our current is. So let's figure that out. So notice we had some current this way we called I1. And we had some current going this way we call that I3. So notice this current I2 this is all a part of this branch here, right? So this current here should be our I2. All right, so that means we can see the direction of this current as we have it drawn. And we're, now we're going downstream, right? So we're going from a high potential down to a lower potential. So we're going to be dropping. So I'm gonna subtract here. So I'm gonna write one minus V4. And we're back at E, we're back where I started, so our overall potential at this point should be zero. 
Okay, so that's just how you solve the loops. Now we are going to use some Ohm's law here. So for example, V6, we could write as I1 times 6 ohms. And our V4, we could write as I2 times 4. Right, we're just using our good old V equals IR for that. Let me rewrite this equation. So we got negative 14 volts plus 6I1 minus 10 volts minus 4I2 equals 0. All right. So let's go ahead and do the next loop. Um, this time, why don't we go ahead and start over here at A. Why don't we do that? We'll start at A. Okay, so we're going to head through our circuit. We're going this way, nothing happens. We head this way, and now we're going from a low to a high potential. So we're going to be adding 10 volts. Okay, notice this time now as we go through the 6 ohm resistor, we're going from our upstream, right, our up above downstream. So we're losing potential here. So we're going to be subtracting. And last time I just called this V6. Let's just skip that step if you don't mind and we'll just call it 6i1, okay? And then we'll go ahead and he keep heading around. We'll go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. We're gonna go through i2, so let's just make sure we know the direction of our current through i2, so we can figure out if it's positive or negative. So i3 is going this way, going this way. So through the two ohm resistor, we're going from upstream to downstream so we're losing potential, so we're gonna go ahead and say minus, and then we'll just write this as two I three. We'll skip that Ohm's law step. All right, and then we're back at A, so we'll say that's equal to zero. So if you notice what we have here, we have three equations. Let's go ahead and number them. This is equation one, this is equation two, this is equation three. Three equations and three unknowns. At this point, you should be able to solve this system of equations. Multiple ways to do that. You can um, use a matrix, you can substitute and solve. I'm going to leave it up to you to actually solve it if you don't mind. Maybe I'll make a part two video where I show you how to use a matrix. That's typically how I like to do it. But let's just pull out these equations, clean these up here, and then you can go ahead and solve it on your own and see if you get the same answer that I do. So equation one, I like to put it, I like to use a matrix. So this is how I would do it. I would go I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Equation two, we have six I1 and then minus four I2. And then we have no I3. Sometimes I like to just lose, use a placeholder there, especially if I'm gonna use the matrix. And then that equals, we have this 14 volts and this 10 volts. We subtract that, gets us negative 24. When we add it to the other side, we get positive 24 volts. All right, and then our third equation, what do we got? We got negative six I1. We have uh, no I2. And then we have a negative 2i3. And then that's going to equal a negative 10 volts. OK, so why don't you go ahead and see if you can solve this, pause the video, and then I'll come back and I will give you the solutions. You can see if you're able to get the same things I get. So go ahead and try to solve it now. All right, so when I solve this, I get a I1. I1 equals 2 amps. I2 equals negative 3 amps. We'll talk about that negative here in a second. And I3 equals 1 amp. Oops, negative 1 amp. Okay, so what do those negatives mean? Well, the negatives mean that we basically, when we drew our initial currents, we just had them in the wrong direction. So in other words, our I1 was good. So our I1 looks like this. 
Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Let's go ahead and just erase all of this. There we go. Erase, erase. Okay, so if we look at this, our I1 is good, right? So our I1 is 2 amps. We got that direction correct. That's 2 amps. Now our I2 is actually in the other direction. So our I2 is going to be going this way, which is 3 amps. And same thing with our I3. Our I3 is actually going in this direction up instead of down. And that's going to be 1 amp going this way. Okay, so you can do some checks here. Notice we have 2 amps going to the right, and then we have 1 amp going up, and that's going to turn into 3 amps. So that's good. We know that um, we're probably on the right track. Let's go ahead and sign, find our voltages. So our voltage, again, this part it should be easy. We're just going to use Ohm's law. So the voltage across that 6 ohm right there is just going to be 2 amps times 6. 2 times 6, that gives us 12 volts. And our voltage through the 2, that one's even easier because that's just 1 amp, right? So our voltage across the 2 ohm, that's going to be 2 volts. And then lastly, do we have another resistor? There it is. So this one is coming this way, right? So our voltage across the 4 ohms is just going to be 3 amps times 4, which equals 12 volts. All right, so that's our, our answer here. 6, 2, and 12. And then our currents through each of those branches are 1, 2, and 3. All right, I hope that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, yeah. Actually, you want to do one more thing? Why don't we check this, see if our answers are right? So we'll go back to the loop law and just make sure conceptually that things are right. So let's start at point B and we're going to go in this kind of clockwise loop here and let's just check it. So as we go through the battery, we're going up to 10 volts. So this is at like a positive 10 right here. Then we drop by 12 volts. So we're going from positive 10 down 12. So that means we're at negative two right here. And then as we keep heading around, we're going to go up 14. So from negative 2 up 14 means we're at positive 12 right here. And then we're going to drop by negative 12 there. Okay, negative 12 was our V4. And so we're back down at 0. So there's a good check. Let's go ahead and check this um, bottom loop. So the bottom loop, let's start at point A here. So as we head through the 2 ohm resistor, we're going from 0 down 2, right? So we're down at negative 2 volts at point D. Then we're going to head up this direction. We're going through this loop. We're going upstream by 12 volts. So we're at negative 2 up to 12. means we're now at positive 10 right here. And then we're going to drop down 10, and we're going to end up at 0 here. So that loop checks out. So we're good. We know that we solved this problem. All right. Hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. And yep, I will see you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye.